The series kicks off by introducing us to Alfia, a magical school in the fairy world called Otherworld. The rules at Alfia get stricter after the headmistress, Farah Dowling, goes missing. Meanwhile, there are changes in the training system for specialists, humans who go on missions with fairies because Saul Silva, the former instructor of the specialists, is arrested on charges of trying to harm another specialist named Andreas. Under the guidance of Rosaline, the new headmistress, all students are required to train rigorously to improve their abilities. This results in many students either choosing to leave or getting expelled from the school each week for not meeting the school's standards. On the other hand, the Soleria Kingdom's forces are actively searching for Dalin, but she remains elusive despite months of efforts. What no one knows is that Rosaline secretly killed Dowling. One night, outside the Alfie dormitories, some students were camping in the woods. During this time, Fairy named Devon and Ivy, a specialist engaged in inappropriate behavior that upset their friends. They discreetly moved to a more secluded spot to be intimate until Devon sensed that something was watching them. Ivy suspected it might be her friend Nick. As they prepared to leave, Ivy glanced toward a tree and pulled out two knives she had with her. Strangely, her body suddenly stiffened, causing Devon to approach her. Ivy moved uncontrollably and ended up accidentally hurting herself by plunging one of her own knives into her neck. Meanwhile, Devon ran away but was attacked by a mysterious creature resembling a large leech known as Scrapers. Switching to Bloom, a fire fairy who was Rosaline's favorite student at Alfia. She was summoned to the headmistress' office because her grades had dropped. Rosaline understood that this was due to the changes in the school's rules and asked Bloom to forget the old ways Dowling used and focus on adapting to the new rules. Rosaline explained that she had intentionally made Alfie's rules stricter to prepare all students for the various dangers in Otherworld, which was inhabited by dangerous creatures unlike the first world where humans lived. At that moment, Blue didn't fully agree with Rosaline and found her increasingly strict since becoming the headmistress of Alfia. Therefore, she planned to find Dowling soon to make Alfie a more comfortable place for all students to learn. On the other hand, Blue's dorm mate Aisha, a water fairy, was seen warming up by the lake before going for a swim. She got surprised when a specialist named Grey Owens emerged from the water. After he climbed ashore, they introduced themselves and Aisha secretly hoped not to run into him again because she found him annoying. Back at school, the news of Davin and Ivy's disappearance in the woods had spread and become a hot topic among many students. Meanwhile, Skye, who was training with other specialists, was paired with Dane for a battle. Unfortunately, Dane managed to injure Skye's waist, which made him act arrogantly and brag about his specialist skills in front of his friends. Sky was then promptly taken to the greenhouse for treatment by Tara, an earth fairy who was also Bloom's dorm mate. On another occasion, Bloom received news that Silva was going to be taken to Polaris for punishment. Along with her dorm mates including Stella, the light fairy and princess of the Solaria kingdom and Musa, the mind fairy, Bloom hatched a plan to free him. Sky, who also heard about Silva's impending punishment from his father, Andreas, was disappointed by what he saw as an overly harsh punishment for a man he considered like a father. However, Andreas forbade Skye from participating in the mission to transfer Silva to Polaris. Beatrix, Andreas' adopted child, who was present, complained to her father about how Rosaline treated her like a servant. Andreas tried to console his adopted daughter, explaining that Rosaline treated her that way because she was needed for something important at Alfie. Meanwhile, Stella secretly eavesdropped on Andreas and his children's conversation using her invisibility magic despite being forbidden to use it after her escape from the kingdom some time ago. Unfortunately, Beatrix discovered Stella's presence and Stella lied, claiming she was following Skye, her former boyfriend. Beatrix then approached Rosaline and informed her about the disappearance of Davin and Ivy, who had not been found yet. However, Rosaline didn't seem to pay much attention to the news, which made Beatrix suspicious. Many students had suddenly gone missing or been expelled from the school since Rosaline's arrival. Additionally, Beatrix found it strange that Rosaline spent a lot of time in the East Wing reading ancient books and she hoped to be involved in something important for the school. At the same time, Skye was thinking about Silva who was serving his punishment for the alleged murder of his biological father. However, Skye felt lost after Silva's departure. Although Andreas had returned, he seemed more concerned about Beatrix. Skye attempted to get closer to his father by returning the sword he had received from Silva, but Andreas refused it, claiming it wasn't his and boasting about himself, which made Skye uncomfortable. Later in the evening, Silva was seen getting into a car headed for Polaris. A team of specialists, including Dane and Riven, Beatrix's boyfriend, was part of the security detail led by Andreas. Meanwhile, Bloom and her friends had quietly prepared and were waiting for Stella before they executed their plan to free Silva. 
Unfortunately, Stella, who was about to leave, was intercepted by Rosaline. She was then taken to the headmistress's office for breaking school rules by using her invisibility magic. As a punishment, Rosaline attached a magic prevention device to Stella's back, causing her pain. School grounds. Inside the security car with Silva, Riven expressed doubts to Dane about whether Silva was truly a murderer. However, Dane was happy to see Silva leaving the school, guilty or not, because he enjoyed the new school system implemented by Rosaline, which shielded him from the ridicule of other students. Meanwhile, Bloom and the others decided to proceed without Stella. They came behind bushes to monitor the car carrying Silva. As the car passed their hiding spot, Aisha used her magic to wet the car's engine, causing it to stall. This would lead to Silva being transferred to another vehicle with less security. While the driver checked the stalled engine, Tara discreetly took the handcuffed keys from the driver's pocket using plant vines. Aisha then sent the keys to Silva in a water bubble. Although Riven briefly noticed the water bubble, he didn't suspect Aisha of trying to free Silva. After successfully providing the keys, she used her magic to release the fuel so that Bloom could set the car on fire. Andreas, who was in the leading car, was shocked when he heard the explosion of his team's vehicle. Meanwhile, Silva took the opportunity to unlock his handcuffs and ran into the forest, Revan and the others chased him until he shot two arrows into Silva's back, forcing him to jump into the river. Andres ordered his men to check downstream and retrieve Silva's body. During this time, Silva managed to survive in the water thanks to Aisha creating an air bubble for him to breathe. Turning to the greenhouse, Sam, Tara's older brother, expressed his frustration to his father, Ben Harvey. They were constantly ordered by Rosaline to make herbal remedies, and Sam felt the pressure of always obeying her orders. Now back to Silva, who had been rescued by Bloom and the others. He asked the girls to take him to Black Bridge in the First World, where he could hide in the home of his friend named Sebastian. Still, the belief Sebastian had the power to defeat Rosaline. Upon arriving at Sebastian's residence, Silva talked about Skye and expressed hope that Skye would forgive him for the past accident when he attacked Andreas. Bloom, who was also present, asked about Dowling's whereabouts, but Silva had no information. They then discussed a plan to expose Rosaline. At Alfia, Dane appeared very enthusiastic as he described Silva's condition after being wounded by an arrow in his back before jumping into the river. He used this to ridicule Skye, which angered him and led to a physical altercation between Skye and Dane. Fortunately, Riven intervened and separated the two specialist friends. Later that night, Aisha and the others met with Stella and questioned why the Solaria Kingdom princess hadn't joined them in the mission to free Silva. Musa, sensing her friend's anger, asked them to calm down and listen to Stella's explanation. Stella then explained that she could meet with them because she had been intercepted and punished by Rosaline for using her invisibility magic. However, Stella didn't go into detail about the nature of her punishment due to her embarrassment. Meanwhile, Bloom was seen meeting with Rosaline and complaining about her decreasing powers. Rosaline requested that Bloom study privately with her and Bloom agreed, hoping to gather more information about Rosaline and unveil the headmistress's true intentions. At the same time, Stella, feeling sad after her punishment, attempted to find Sky to confide in him. However, she couldn't locate him and ended up meeting Beatrix, who invited her to have a drink together and help her relax. Stella began sharing about the punishment from Rosaline, which she couldn't disclose to her doormates because she felt ashamed. While they were still talking, Davin, who was injured, suddenly stumbled into the room. Before losing consciousness, he uttered Rosaline's name. At that very moment, Rosaline, who had just arrived at the East Wing, was shocked to learn that one of the students she had captured had disappeared. One day, Tara ventured into the forest to search for plant roots needed for Davin's treatment, as he was now being cared for in the greenhouse. While hunting for the plants, she talked with Sam, who continued to complain about Rosaline's high-handed behavior towards their family. Their father, however, remained silent and complied with all of the headmistress's requests. As they chatted, Tara began to feel as if she were being watched, suspecting it might be the same creature that had attacked Davin. Just before using her magic to defend herself, Flora, Tara's distant cousin, emerged from behind a tree, bringing joy to Tara, who immediately embraced her cousin. Back at the dorm, Tara introduced Flora as a nature fairy to her roommate. Everyone seemed to welcome Flora's presence except for Stella, who wasn't pleased with the arrival of a new person in her room, especially since she was a princess. In the headmistress's office, Andres reported his failure in capturing Silva, which disappointed Rosaline. She punished him using her freezing magic. Beatrix, unable to bear seeing her father punished, then entered the room and pretended to have an important matter, asking Rosaline to sign a crucial document. Rosaline released her magic, allowing Andreas to leave the room. Beatrix expressed her suspicions that Silva could escape with the help of someone else, but she had no concrete evidence. Hearing this, Rosaline explained that Beatrix's suspicions were useless without supporting evidence. 
Shortly after, Bloom entered the room for a private lesson with Rosaline who warmly welcomed her. Beatrix, witnessing this, felt irritated by the headmistress's cold treatment toward her. In the greenhouse, Tara was busy treating a specialist named Kat who had injured her hand. While tending to her, Kat noticed the growing friendship between Flora and Riven, and advised Tara to keep Flora away from Riven, who had a reputation as a troublemaker at school. After receiving this advice, Tara approached Flora and asked Riven to leave while giving him the item he had been looking for earlier. She also warned her cousin, who seemed interested in Riven, to stay away from him because he wasn't a good guy. Back in the headmistress's office, Bloom began reading a book on magic control. During a brief moment when Rosaline left the room, Bloom took the opportunity to search through Rosaline's desk drawers. She discovered an old book with illustrations of strange creatures. Quickly, Bloom took photographs of some of the images in the book. Unexpectedly, Rosaline returned and realized that Bloom was attempting to spy on her. After their private study session ended, Bloom invited Aisha and Stella to meet and discuss her discovery of the strange creatures in Rosaline's room. She then sent all the images to Sebastian, who was with Silva. Sebastian struggled to decipher the ancient text, especially with many complex symbols that were not easy to understand, so he needed a translation dictionary. Silva suggested that Bloom go with Skye to retrieve the dictionary from his house. After ending the communication with Bloom, Silva quickly drew a map of his house so that Bloom could easily find the translation book. Suddenly, Sebastian pulled Silva into the portal behind the closet door just as Andreas arrived. Andreas questioned Sebastian about Silva and Sebastian. Wanting to protect his friend, tried to deny any involvement. However, Andreas didn't believe him and attacked him, opening the closet door revealing that it was empty. Not finding anything, Andreas was about to leave but noticed the map of Silva's house lying on Sebastian's desk. At Alfia, Bloom persuaded Sky to accompany her to his house, assuring him that it was all for Silva's sake. Sky agreed, and they arrived near Sky's former residence a while later. Bloom was amazed by the natural beauty of the place and suggested they go for a horse ride, which made them both happy as they spent time together. Upon entering the house, Sky reminisced about various childhood memories and Bloom, who quickly retrieved the ancient language translation dictionary, also glimpsed some childhood photos of Sky. Shortly after, Sky's father arrived and began sharing stories from Sky's childhood through several of his cherished belongings. Turning to Sam, who still held onto his anger towards Rosaline, Muzav accompanied him and encouraged him to express his frustrations. However, he claimed to be fine, which prompted Muzav to secretly absorb his emotions, helping him to calm down. At Sky's house, he and Bloom heard the sound of a car in the yard, and to their surprise, Andreas and his team arrived. Sky quickly led Bloom to hide in the basement of his bedroom. Meanwhile, Andreas and his team entered the house but didn't find anyone, so he left and ordered Dane and Riven to set the house on fire. Sky was shocked to see his home starting to burn, and he urged Bloom to hurry upstairs and out of the house. However, she refused because Andreas and the others were waiting outside. Instead, she used her fire magic to protect herself and Sky from the flames. In the greenhouse laboratory, Sam and Musa found Tara researching a plant that could heal Davin. Unfortunately, the treatment would be too strong for him, making it dangerous for his body. Despite Tara's warnings, Flora disregarded them and injected the potion into Davin, causing him to react violently. Flora then showed him a picture of a scraper and asked if it was the creature that had attacked him. He eventually confirmed that it was even though his body continued to react, leading Tara to try to restrain him with her magical plant vines. Unfortunately, he broke free, attacked Flora, and demanded his magic back before running out of the room. At the same time, Beatrix and Stella found themselves in Rosaline's room, enjoying a drink and chatting freely since Rosaline was always occupied in the east wing of the school. Their relaxation was suddenly interrupted when Davin burst into the room, followed by Tara, who had come to administer a calming potion. Rosaline appeared shortly after and Davin reached for a weapon to attack his schoolmates. Tara tried to approach him quietly with a calming potion, but Rosaline intervened, sensing that Davin was under some influence. Rosaline used her magic and Davin fell unconscious. Tara checked his heartbeat, only to discover that he had died. Rosaline asked if anyone had injected something into Davin and Flora, on the verge of confessing, was cut off by Tara, who took the blame. Rosaline then ordered them all to leave her room. On another occasion, Ben shared his successful efforts to persuade Rosaline not to expel Tara, although he believed that leaving Alfie might be a good thing for her, freeing her from Rosaline's influence. Sam, witnessing his father's despair, felt saddened. In another room, Bloom and the others conducted a video call with Sebastian to analyze the images from Rosaline's ancient book, using the translation dictionary. Escher managed to decipher one symbol, 
meaning to store, while Bloom interpreted another symbol as magic. When combined, they indicated storing magic. Terra recalled Davin's request to have his magic returned, leading Bloom to assume that the scraper creature was used to steal fairies' magic to make the thief stronger and Davin was allowed to die to protect this secret. However, Stella had doubts about this assumption as Rosaline had already become the most powerful fairy in Otherworld, and there was no apparent reason for her to desire the magic of other fairies. Sebastian pointed out that sometimes, even when someone becomes powerful, they still desire more power. On the other side, Rosaline gathered Andreas and his team to inquire about the latest news regarding the missing Silva. As he had failed in his mission, she punished them with her freezing magic. Beatrix tried to help her father by suggesting that Riven knew something about Silva. Rosaline then ordered Andreas and Dane to leave, while Riven remained in the room with Beatrix. Meanwhile, Sky, having just taken a shower, was surprised by Silva's presence in Alfia. Silva apologized, but Sky remained indifferent, returning the sword that Silva had previously identified as Andreas's. Silva revealed that he had sneaked into Alfia with Ben's help. He was willing to face banishment just to see Sky, but Sky's anger prevailed. He expelled Silva from both Alfia and Black Bridge, forbidding him from ever returning. Simultaneously, Rosalie and Andreas learned of Silva's infiltration into the school after Ben was forced to reveal it. Consequently, Silva was apprehended and taken to the East Wing. Several days later, Bloom and Aisha were given a task by Rosaline to go shopping in the First World because Alfie would host a banquet for alumni. The three of them volunteered to participate in the preparations for the party and have a chance to visit the First World and meet Sebastian. Upon reaching Sebastian's residence, Bloom informed him that all the missing fairies were in the East Wing, heavily guarded by Rosaline. Sebastian suggested that they sneak into the East Wing during the banquet since the guards and Rosaline would be occupied, especially since Queen Luna would introduce Rosaline as the headmistress of Alfie and the strongest fairy in the other world. Bloom thought the banquet would be the perfect opportunity to expose Rosaline's wrongdoing, especially with various important guests in attendance. Back at Alfie, Bloom and Stella were strategizing on how to execute their plan to investigate the East Wing during the banquet. Stella learned that only VIP guests would be allowed in the main banquet, including herself as a royal member. She also mentioned that her mother couldn't attend and would be represented by her uncle, who disliked Rosaline, making Stella think she could persuade him to help remove the magical restraints that Rosaline had imposed. In the East Wing, Rosaline was conducting an experiment with a rat, injecting a potion into it for research purposes. When she placed the rat inside a box, another creature inside immediately attacked it. Shortly afterward, Andres entered and informed her that the invited guests had arrived at Alfia. In the dorm room, Stella and the others were busy getting ready for the banquet. Bloom suggested going to the East Wing, thinking that if Rosaline found out, she might pardon her since she was one of Rosaline's favorite students. Aisha and the others disagreed as Bloom's absence at the party would raise suspicion. Meanwhile, Beatrix knocked on the door, pretending to want to share her sadness after breaking up with Riven. Unfortunately, Stella said she was busy, leaving Beatrix disappointed. A little later, Bloom and the others were at the banquet, and as they were about to strategize, Rosaline invited Bloom to join her. Stella went to meet her uncle Josh, who had arrived. At the same time, Tara received a message from Musa informing her that Sam was angry and had left Alfia. Back to Bloom, after hearing Rosaline's invitation to the VIP banquet, she initially claimed she wasn't worthy to participate. However, Rosaline assured her that Bloom was the first fairy to bring about many changes at Alfia, making her an essential figure at the banquet. Bloom seemed reluctant, but Rosaline revealed that she knew about Bloom and her friends helping Silva escape a while ago. If this information were to reach the Royal Solarian Army Commander, the Kingdom could capture Bloom and the others. Surprised and puzzled by how Rosaline found out about this, Bloom had no choice but to comply with Rosaline's request to attend the banquet with the VIP guests. Meanwhile, Sebastian, who had joined the banquet, approached Aisha and Flora to talk. Upon learning that Bloom couldn't enter the East Wing, he suggested that the two of them replace her. Stella, on the other hand, was still busy trying to persuade Josh to talk to Luna and remove the magical restraints on her back. Returning to Blue, who had entered the banquet room, she was surprised to find Sky there, who had also been invited by Rosaline. Shortly after, Stella arrived with Josh, questioning why Bloom was in the room. During their conversation, Josh seemed impressed by Bloom's knowledge as a fairy. In the East Wing, Aisha and Flora quietly began to execute their plan. Meanwhile, Sebastian observed what was happening in the banquet hall from another table. Bloom then advised Rosaline to be more composed when dealing with Josh. Rosaline mentioned that Josh could be quite irritating to her, but she didn't want to have problems with the royal members. She also discussed the suspicions that Bloom and the others had about her being behind various issues at Alfia, emphasizing that she did it all to protect her students. 
Before leaving, she reminded Bloom that powerful fairies often faced distrust. Bloom felt confused by everything Rosaline had discussed and began to waver in her suspicions toward the headmistress. Inside the East Wing, while Aisha was inspecting the room, she was suddenly attacked by a scraper. Fortunately, Flora managed to save her by burying a creature. After meeting Bloom and Stella, they showed some photos of the scrapers that Flora had burned earlier, along with some notes found in the East Wing. Bloom then stated that they still lacked evidence to accuse Rosaline of planning something sinister, especially now that Rosaline knew about their actions in rescuing Silva and could easily expose them to the kingdom. She also began to doubt whether Rosaline was as evil as they had believed all along. Stella smiled upon hearing this and told Bloom that she was starting to trust Rosaline only because the headmistress had always favored her. Before leaving, Stella affirmed her commitment to expose all the wrongdoings Rosaline had done at Alfie. With confidence, Stella addressed all the guests in the banquet hall, raising concerns about the unusual activities Rosaline had undertaken as the headmistress of Alfia, including the imprisonment of fairies. The room fell silent as they listened to Stella's words. Rosaline arrived with Davin, who was still alive, and began to explain her own investigation into the rumors surrounding the disappearance of two Alfia students. She revealed that she had borrowed royal archive books from Arthur and had stumbled upon information about ancient creatures known as scrapers, these creatures, she explained, were used by blood witches to absorb fairy magic, making the witches more powerful. With the appearance of these scrapers near Alfie, Rosaline suspected the presence of a blood witch among them. After hearing Rosaline's explanation, Stella left the banquet hall, feeling embarrassed for accusing Rosaline without substantial evidence. Skye followed her to offer comfort. Meanwhile, Rosaline introduced Bloom to everyone as a fairy possessing the legendary dragonfire magic, the protector of Otherworld, leaving the guests astonished. Once the party came to an end, Bloom approached Rosaline and inquired about her suspicion that blood witches had kidnapped her parents more than a decade ago to steal her dragonfire magic. Rosaline admitted that she wasn't entirely certain but promised to help Bloom find her parents. As a sign of her sincerity, Rosaline also pardoned Silva from his punishment, as the blood witches also his enemies. On the other hand, Beatrix found herself alone outside the gates of Alfia, feeling misunderstood by everyone, including Andreas and Dane. Suddenly, she sensed a lurking presence and was attacked by a group of scrapers. The following day, Beatrix was reported missing and during a meeting with Rosaline, Andreas suspected that blood witches were behind Beatrix's disappearance. Andreas proposed a fairy exchange to save Beatrix, whom he believed to be his biological daughter. Rosaline disagreed with this idea as fairy exchanges were typically what the evil witches wanted when kidnapping fairies. Despite Rosaline's objections, Andreas decided to go through with his plan. Without Rosaline's consent, he met with Marco, and killed him, intending to use Marco's comrade as a hostage in exchange for Beatrix's release. Back at school, Bloom found herself at the center of attention among the students after news spread about her dragonfire power. In response, she and Aisha began researching the history of blood witches on Earth. From historical records, they discovered that dragonfire magic had last appeared during a war a thousand years ago. During a conversation with Aisha, Bloom admitted that she didn't entirely trust Rosaline. However, because she believed Rosaline could help her uncover the truth about her identity, Bloom eventually agreed to collaborate with the headmistress. She met with Rosaline and expressed her desire to hunt down blood witches to learn more about her birth parents. Rosaline advised Bloom not to rush, considering the importance of protecting a fairy with legendary dragonfire power. Rosaline also mentioned Beatrix's abduction during the previous banquet and suspected that one of the guests might be a blood witch. However, she asked Blue to keep this information confidential, as it could be a trap set by the Blood Witches to capture her. In the forest, Andreas was seen dragging Marco's lifeless body and communicating with a Blood Witch to arrange a hostage exchange. The Blood Witches approved the proposal, and when the Witch arrived, Andreas attacked him. Unfortunately, another Blood Witch discovered Andreas' at actions and froze him in place. Meanwhile, Sebastian headed to a pub to meet Bloom. He shared with her that during the previous banquet, Andreas had insulted him, calling him a foolish specialist. Sebastian had never liked Andreas, who had a reputation as a bully at Alfia. Before leaving, Sebastian gave Bloom a file containing the results of their investigation into various incidents at Alfia. In her dormitory room, Stella, who hadn't attended the school party, received a distress message from Beatrix, asking for help. From the pictures Beatrix sent, it appeared she was in an abandoned old building. Stella grew extremely worried and immediately called Bloom, who was at the party with the others. Bloom asked Stella not to act hastily, suspecting it might be a trap to lure the fairies. To convince Stella, Bloom finally disclosed the secret that Beatrix had been kidnapped by blood witches and might be unconscious. The message was likely a ploy to draw the fairies to the location. A while later, Skye and Riven, having learned about Beatrix's kidnapping, prepared to rescue her. 
Bloom, seeing this, tried to dissuade them, but Sky reassured her that everything would be okay. Musa also decided to join Sky and Riven. Although worried, Bloom reluctantly allowed them to head to Beatrix's location. In the midst of this, Stella grew frustrated with Bloom and asked her dorm mate to let others handle the rescue. Bloom, not willing to accept this, criticized Stella for enjoying giving orders just because she was a princess. Stella, growing even angrier, revealed that she had never wanted to be at Alfia in the first place but was trapped there due to a magical restraint device on her back. After showing them the device embedded in her back, Bloom and the others were surprised because Stella had never shared this information with them before. Meanwhile, Sky, Riven, and Musa had ventured into an abandoned cabin to rescue the unconscious Beatrix. However, they heard the eerie sounds of scrapers and suddenly, Andres appeared before them. Sky was puzzled by his father's presence, but Musa quickly realized that someone was controlling Andreas' mind. Revan urged Sky and Musa to leave while he confronted Andreas. Musa tried to find a hiding spot but was attacked by a scraper that drained her fairy magic. She managed to break free and hid in a room, although she had lost some of her powers. Musa contacted Bloom with phone to relay everything that transpired in the cabin, including Andreas being under someone else's control. Flora advised Musa to stay hidden until her magic powers recovered. Bloom inquired about Andreas and Musa sensed anger and resentment towards Sky's father, suggesting that the one controlling Andreas knew him well. Outside, Andreas continued to battle Silva and other specialists who had come to rescue Beatrix. After Sky suggested that Riven take Beatrix outside, Riven carried her to Dane, who was guarding the building's exterior. Riven intended to return to find Musa, whose magic was fading. In the dormitory, Bloom reviewed files from Sebastian to uncover the identity of the Blood Witch. After discussing with her friends, she realized the Blood Witch's identity, deducing their strong grudge against Andreas. She rushed to confront someone she knew, preparing her fire magic. Inside her room, she found a man conducting a mysterious ritual. Bloom summoned Sebastian, expecting her suspicions to be true. Calmly, Sebastian admitted to being a Blood Witch who had absorbed various fairy magic powers, including Davin's. He expressed a desire to take Bloom's power and offered a partnership to betray the fairies. Before Bloom could respond, Aisha arrived and chased Sebastian into a portal in his room. Bloom returned to Alfia and informed Rosaline that Sebastian was the evil witch they had sought. Stella and the others arrived, relieved to see Bloom safe. Stai appeared visibly distraught and Bloom hugged him as he explained that he had been forced to stab Andreas when his father attempted to kill Silva. Aisha arrived late, having lost Sebastian, but her friends reassured her, acknowledging her efforts. Worried about Musa, they were surprised when Riven arrived carrying Musa, who was injured and covered in blood. On another occasion, Bloom attempted to contact Sebastian and invited him to meet outside the school. Unfortunately, Sebastian declined the invitation as he had become aware of her plan to capture him. After the failed attempt, Rosaline and Bavani, the commander of the Solarian Kingdom's forces, along with hidden soldiers, revealed themselves. They discussed the presence of a blood witch spy who had discovered their plan. Rosaline stressed the urgency of capturing Sebastian before he could absorb more fairy powers and become stronger. Back at Alfia, Bloom, Aisha, and Stella were walking in the dormitory corridor, discussing the unsuccessful capture plan. Their conversation was interrupted when they saw Musa mopping the floor and receiving a reprimand from Rosaline for not carrying out her punishment properly. Musa had left Alfia without permission to rescue Beatrix, and due to the scraper attack, she had lost her magic, which should have resulted in expulsion. However, Rosaline chose not to expel her because she was Bloom's friend. Stella then asked Bloom and Aisha to retrieve a package from the kingdom. Beatrix was also inspecting her package and asked Stella about it, to which Stella replied that she would explain later. In their dorm room, Aisha showed them a convergence crystal borrowed from the queen, thanks to Stella's negotiation skills. Aisha and Stella planned to use the crystal, a fairy magic battery, to combine their magic and restore Musa's powers. Bloom and the others, including Musa holding the Convergence Crystal, prepared in their positions. They began channeling their magic into the crystal. However, Musa unexpectedly stopped the process and left the room, leaving her friends puzzled. Aisha was frustrated with herself for the failed plan, but Bloom reassured her. She decided to meet with Sebastian and ask him to return Musa's magic, even though it was risky. To carry out her plan, Bloom needed a royal ancient book to exchange for Musa's magic. Stella assisted her by taking the book from Beatrix. In the stone circle, Rosaline and Silva planned to expose the Blood Witch spy at Alfia. They decided to strengthen the magic veil with a double shield to identify the infiltrator. Silva found this precaution excessive, but Rosaline ignored his concerns and began reinforcing the shield. Meanwhile, Bloom, armed with the royal ancient book, said goodbye to Skye and headed to the First World to meet Sebastian. 
Despite Sky's worries for her safety, Bloom assured him she would be fine and stepped out of the magic veil, which now had Rosaline's enhanced protection. In the first world, Bloom was surprised when Sebastian suggested meeting at a cafe instead of a more secluded place. When she arrived at the cafe, Sebastian praised her courage for meeting him alone. Without wasting time, Bloom asked Sebastian to return Muse's magic in exchange for the ancient royal book she had brought. Sebastian, uninterested in the old book, revealed its connection to his father and presented two options for returning Muse's magic, which using a scraper to extract and return the absorbed magic or killing him. Realizing the difficulty of both options, Bloom chose to leave Sebastian and promptly contacted Aisha to share her meeting with Sebastian. Aisha and the other fairies grew concerned about Bloom's safety and went to Rosaline to inquire about her whereabouts. Rosaline assured them she would continue monitoring her connection with Bloom and expressed indifference if Bloom lost control of her powers, which could potentially harm Sebastian. Rosaline was also annoyed because Beatrix had secretly taken the ancient royal book on Stella's request. Returning to Bloom, she initially led Sebastian to a more secluded place with the intention of killing him. Sebastian, however, was aware of her plan and attempted to sway her intentions. He offered to reveal Bloom's origins and return the powers he had absorbed from her friends. The condition was that she must surrender her dragon fire magic, which she sought to use to restore Asterdale City and initiate a war against the fairies. Sebastian then disclosed the story of Bloom's kidnapping by his father many years ago, but refused to continue unless she gave him her power. Aware of Sebastian's sinister intentions for war, Bloom firmly refused to relinquish her magic, leaving Sebastian disappointed as she prepared to leave empty-handed. He intentionally mentioned Rosaline, revealing her involvement in Dowling's death at the cemetery. Later that night, Bloom's friends and Sky awaited her at the Magic Veil boundary, which they couldn't pass due to Rosaline's shield. Unexpectedly, Bloom found herself at the cemetery, face to face with Rosaline. She expressed her disappointment with Rosaline for killing Dowling. In response, Rosaline attempted to incapacitate Bloom using her ice magic. This angered Bloom, causing her to lose control of her emotions and unleash her powerful dragon fire magic, ultimately burning Rosaline to death. Sometime later, Bloom returned to Alfia, and as a consequence of her actions leading to Rosaline's death, Silva was compelled to place a magic inhibitor on her hand. Silva then urged Bloom and her friends to keep Rosaline's death a secret, attributing it to Bloom's dragon fire. Shortly after, Silva connected them to Luna through a hologram. Luna announced that Rosaline's death was caused by a blood witch, even though she knew it was actually Bloom who had killed the headmistress. Bloom was shocked by Luna's statement, which had the potential to trigger a war between the fairies and blood witches. The next morning, Stella woke up Bloom, who was still restless. She reassured Bloom that Sebastian had used her to kill Rosaline intentionally, so it wasn't entirely her fault. Aisha also joined them and mentioned that Tara and Flora were planning to search for evidence of Dowling's body, which could prove Rosaline's guilt. Meanwhile, Stella and Aisha were determined to help Bloom get a lighter sentence in her trial with Luna the following day. The day of the trial arrived, and Luna, who had come to Alfia, wasted no time in starting the murder case trial involving Bloom. At the same time, Tara and Flora were at the cemetery searching for Dowling's body as potential evidence. Flora used a chemical to extract decomposing bodies from the ground, but they found nothing. Instead, Tara noticed a withered plant and picked it up. Back at Alfia, Luna asked for physical evidence after Bloom accused Rosaline of killing Dowling. Unfortunately, Bloom couldn't provide any evidence because Tara and Flora hadn't found Dowling's body yet. Stella couldn't present a strong defense either. As Bloom was losing hope, Aisha arrived and tried to convince the Queen that Bloom was a good fairy. She explained that Bloom had grown up in the First World and had been raised by ordinary humans, which made it challenging for her to control her magic. However, Luna shocked everyone by revealing that Aisha had been dating Grey, who was actually a blood witch. Aisha was stunned by this revelation as she had believed Grey was a regular human. After Aisha left, Stella continued to plead with the Queen to spare Bloom, but Luna showed Stella the letter she had written when requesting the Convergence Crystal. In the letter, Stella had referred to Bloom as a time bomb. Stella looked nervous, realizing Luna had used the letter to justify the punishment. Bloom finally accepted her fate and confessed to everything, leading Luna to sentence her to 20 years of stasis. Stella continued to plead, but Bloom gracefully accepted her punishment and was taken to the confinement area. Shortly afterward, Luna removed the magic inhibitor from Stella's back and acknowledged that her daughter deserved to be the crown princess of the realm. Stella, however, refused the title and left the courtroom immediately. She rushed back to the dormitory to inform her friends of Bloom's trial outcome, and they all felt deeply saddened by the news that Bloom would be imprisoned for decades. Meanwhile, 
after Grey had been expelled from Alfia and ended his relationship with Aisha, he met Sebastian who urged him to stay focused on their mission to rebuild Astrodel. Grey was still unsure about his feelings for Aisha, so Sebastian reminded him of the fairy's blame on blood witches for Rosaline's death, caused by Bloom's actions. As for Skye, he was secretly planning to visit Bloom in her confinement cell, while preparing with other specialists for an attack on Sebastian's house. However, his actions were discovered by the guards, leading to his capture and confinement in the dormitory. Inside the dormitory, Stella and the others were thinking of ways to free Bloom, but they couldn't find a solution. This prompted Flora to return to her study table and document the results of her plant research. While doing so, she noticed that all her plants except the one Terra had found that a cemetery were withering. Sensing something unusual, she borrowed the Convergence Crystal from Aisha to infuse magical energy into the plant. Meanwhile, while imprisoned, Bloom reminisced about her childhood and unintentionally shed tears. To her surprise, someone's hand reached through the magic barrier to wipe away her tears. Simultaneously, her confinement cell slowly disappeared and Bloom realized that Dowling had returned. A little later in the school storage room, Bloom met Aisha and her friends where Flora explained how she had revived Dowling from a plant Terra had found at a cemetery. Dowling shared that she had connected her spirit with nature because she hadn't had the chance to say goodbye to those she knew. She also apologized for not being able to assist in the war against the Blood Witches as she would soon fade away. However, she left them with a final lesson urging Bloom and her friends to make peace with their emotions to unlock their true magic potential. After imparting this wisdom, Dowling and Bloom had a private conversation in the storage room, where Bloom shared her concerns about controlling her magical powers. Dowling reassured her, advising her to focus on saving her own world rather than the entire world. They shared a heartfelt hug before Dowling slowly faded away. Meanwhile, Flora and Musa rushed back to the dormitory upon hearing that Bavani had discovered Blue had escaped confinement. On the other place, the specialists had raided Sebastian's house but found no one inside, suspecting that a blood witch had learned of their attack plan. Back at Alfia, Beatrix had secretly colluded with Sebastian and aided him in infiltrating the school. She used her magic to disrupt all of Alfie's electrical power, enabling Sebastian to summon thousands of scrapers to attack the fairies. When Musa and Flora approached the dorm room and noticed that the door was open, Flora volunteered to check inside first in case Sebastian was lurking there. Beatrix, who had accompanied Sebastian, patrolled the hallways to see if any other fairies were around. Despite spotting Musa hiding in the corridor, Beatrix didn't alert Sebastian. On another occasion, all the specialists gathered outside the storage room where Bloom was held. She showed Silva a recording made by Musa, revealing a blood witch's actions with Bavani in the basement. They discussed a plan to counter the blood witches and Bloom disclosed Sebastian's goal of acquiring the power of the dragon flame. Shegum considered surrendering her power to return the magic to all the fairies. Silva disagreed, fearing that Sebastian would become even more greedy and seek to absorb the magic of other fairies. Meanwhile, in prison, Sky finally managed to escape by incapacitating a blood witch who had unlocked the confinement cell door. Upon his escape, he encountered Beatrix questioning Sebastian about his motives for infiltrating Alfia. However, Sebastian refused to provide answers, prompting Beatrix to take an ancient book to uncover Sebastian's true intentions herself. In the storage room, Bloom, Aisha, Stella, and Tara discussed their plan to infiltrate the school, which was now under the control of the blood witches. During their conversation, Bloom suddenly had a vision. She saw Sebastian attempting to enter a portal to a dark world, where menacing creatures would attack Alfia. After the vision, Musa, who was trapped in the dormitory, called Bloom and vowed to save Flora before the Blood Witches could train her magic. Musa armed herself with a staff, ready to defend against the Blood Witches until they could rescue Flora. Meanwhile, Sky had joined the other specialists under Silva's command. They were forced to retreat and wait for the Solaria troops to arrive. Sky managed to contact Bloom, but Sebastian took control of his phone and threatened to kill Sky, who was now his hostage. Sebastian ordered Bloom to leave her hiding place and follow Grey, who was waiting for her. Fearing for Skye's safety, Bloom dropped her phone and complied with Sebastian's demand going with Grey. Later on, Stella received a message from Bloom and went to the forest in search of her. However, she couldn't locate Bloom until she was startled by Beatrix's presence. Stella, annoyed with Beatrix for aiding the Blood Witches in infiltrating Alfia, put on an angry expression. Beatrix asked Stella not to misunderstand her visit to the forest and showed her an ancient royal book. She explained Sebastian's plan to restore Astrodel and the method to summon entities from the Dark Realm that could bring the dead back to life. To accomplish all this, Sebastian needed the Dragon Flame, which was why Beatrix asked for Stella's help, especially since Skye was now held hostage by the Blood Witches. Stella appeared hesitant, but Beatrix tried to convince her by saying she was like Bloom, who didn't know her past. 
Bloom then expressed her anger towards Grey for betraying Aisha. Grey explained that he had feelings for Aisha, but also wanted to bring his family back to life. As they entered a room, Bloom saw Skye unconscious and bound to the ceiling. Sebastian immediately asked her to channel her magic into the Convergence crystal he had taken from the dormitory. Meanwhile, in the specialist's hideout, Tara learned that her friends were fighting an Alfia. She urged everyone to move without waiting for the Solaria troops. Later, Flora successfully created a potion to eliminate the Scrapers. She intentionally lured dozens of these creatures to attack her and injected the potion into her arm, causing the Scrapers to die. Musa, surprised by Flora's actions, left her to join the other specialists, as instructed earlier. On the other hand, Aisha, Stella, and Tara proceeded into the school, where Sebastian had almost absorbed all of Bloom's dragon flaying powers. Unfortunately, Beatrix arrived and disrupted the flow of magic, freeing Sky from his restraints and shattering the crystal Sebastian held. In a fit of rage, Sebastian killed Beatrix by slamming her against the wall. Aisha and the others arrived just in time, while Bloom unleashed her fire magic, frightening Sebastian. He taunted Bloom, claiming that her friends would meet the same fate as Beatrix. Stella rushed to Beatrix's lifeless body and together with Aisha and Tara, they attacked Sebastian with their true magic. Bloom reabsorbed her magic from the crystal and joined her friends in defeating Sebastian. Simultaneously with Sebastian's demise, all the fairies and specialists who had lost their powers regained their abilities. Bloom was overjoyed to see Skye wake up, but she had another vision of a dark figure coming to Alfia. She decided to investigate this further and search for information in the ancient royal book. After collecting various details, she believed that her vision was a sign for her to journey to the Dark Realm. Bloom then wrote a farewell letter to her friends in Sky before heading to the Sanctum to enter the portal. Just as she was about to step through, Sky arrived seeking an explanation. Bloom clarified that her presence in Alfie was a danger to others, so she needed to search for her mother. Sky hugged her one last time as she waved goodbye before entering the portal. The next morning, Aisha and her friends read Bloom's farewell letter, bringing tears to their eyes. Towards the end of the series, Aisha was still grieving over Bloom's departure and was comforted by Grey. Musa, who had struggled with her magic, decided to become a specialist, while Stella visited Beatrix's grave to leave a flower. As Stella left, the flower wilted and a dark figure appeared next to Beatrix's grave. Meanwhile, Bloom had entered the Dark Realm and encountered a red-haired woman with her back turned. Moral lesson from the story, if someone asks for an old book at a cafe in exchange for magical powers, is probably best to better to just order a latte instead.